Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Nemesis. Now you guys may have seen this a little while ago when we actually had the episode where we're trying to make an Enterprise and also a Bird of Prey fly. We took the lines of both the Enterprise and the Bird of Prey to design our own versions, and this is what we call now the FT Easy Nemesis. Now the cool thing about the Nemesis is it's gonna actually teach you a little bit about how forward swept wings work, and also we're gonna bring our canard back to have a four wing working for us to provide lift. Now this is a really easy plane to build and also a very easy plane to to fly. You're going to learn a lot about center of gravity and this plane likes to fly on a calm easy day and it's incredibly maneuverable when you get it balanced out right. So we're going to be using our kit installed. This can be a chuck lighter as well as a two channel easy pack plane. So the first thing we're going to do with this build is we're going to be building the airframe kind of showing you how it goes together and then afterwards we're going to show you how to put the electronics on it to fly it radio controlled. So let's go ahead and get our materials in order. The first thing you're going to need is your speed belt kit. Along with that you're also going to want some tape and a little bit of hot glue. Let's get the materials in order and we'll get started. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is locating our three planks that contain our FT Easy Nemesis. So you're gonna have a plank that's the main wings, you're gonna have a plank that's the center section of the body, and then you're also gonna have a plank that's the fins and also the doublers for the fuselage. Once you've located those three planks, go ahead and pop out all your pieces and we'll start with the main body. So we have all of our pieces popped out. The first pieces on my right you're gonna notice are gonna be the wings. Then we're going to have our center section that the wings are going to fasten to. We're going to have the very front canard that's going to slide out at the end of our build. And then we also have our main vertical fuselage and the two doublers. All the way to my left here we have our two vertical fins which is going to give the plane stability as it flies through the air. Let's go ahead and move our vertical fins, our fuselage doublers to the side, and we'll put all of our attention right now onto the wings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to line up the three parts for our main wing. We have the center body, our left wing, and our right wing. You're going to notice here that I position this little rectangle here to the left hand side. It's really important that we do that because if we don't do that the control board will mount on the wrong side and we'll have to cut a hole in later. So go ahead and make sure it looks just like this before we continue. Once we know how everything's laid out, go ahead and peel the front and the back of both wings and the center body. Now that all the paper is peeled, let's go ahead and flip over everything 180 degrees. So now that offset rectangle is going to be facing towards the right. This is going to be the bottom of our wings and we're going to be using our tape now to join the wings on both sides of the body. Now you can use either the two inch packing tape or you can use three quarter inch scotch tape. The choice is yours. I'm going to be using two inch packing tape today. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split this right around the middle and just, just apply it to one side. Now lifting up the loose tape here, I'm going to carefully align the very front leading edge so it matches the contour on the front. On the back side you're going to see a slight tab that's going to be revealed and that's okay because that's what our vertical stabilizers are going to line up against. Once you push that hard up against it, go ahead and let the tape fall down and then smooth it out. You can use scissors or a razor blade to cut off the excess tape. Let's do the exact same process now on the other side. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split this right around the middle, just apply it to one side. Now lifting up the loose tape here, I'm going to carefully align the very front leading edge so it matches the contour on the front. Once you push that hard up against it, go ahead and let the tape fall down and then smooth it out. You can use scissors or a razor blade to cut off the excess tape. Now that we have the tape applied to the bottom, we're going to flip it over 180 degrees and we're going to then take our dihedral gauge, which is going to apply the right angle to give this plane a nice stable flight characteristic. So right here we have the gauge that's going to give us dihedral. Dihedral is really important in many airplanes because it's going to give the airplane the ability to self-stabilize. Now we do have our electronics, which are going to also help us make the plane fly smoothly, but dihedral is really important not only in model aircraft, but also in general aviation. Oftentimes you'll see dihedral on jets all the way down to small little home-built airplanes. Before we put our dihedral gauge on, we're first going to push our fingernail into the crease right between the center body and the outer wing. This is going to give us a little bit of room to allow the dihedral to easily take form. Our next step is to apply our dihedral gauge and we should easily be able to push down on the center body flat against the table and the angle for the dihedral should take place without the center body lifting. Once you're happy with the way it looks, go ahead and take a piece of tape and tape it on the top. That's great. Good. Just like on the bottom, we can cut off the excess with a pair of scissors or a razor blade. Thank you. 
Same process on the other side. We'll go ahead and move our dihedral gauge over. Make sure we have plenty of room here. Perfect. And what I like to do is just start on one side here. I'll push that flat up against the table and then I'll roll the tape onto the other side. Just like that. At this point, the main portion of our body and our wings are now done. We can go ahead and put this aside and we'll start on our center section of the fuselage. So here we have the center section of the fuselage. We're gonna have our main vertical center section and we're gonna have our two identical nose doublers. Go ahead and take your time and peel off all the paper from all three of these pieces. Once we have all the paper peeled off, we're gonna do a quick test fit here. And all we have to do is line up the outer perimeter of the front piece, and you're gonna see it lines up very nicely. Take special care to make sure that your front pieces line up on the outer perimeter, and that you don't accidentally push them together, closing the gap in the middle. That's where the front little canard wing is gonna go. Once we're happy with how everything fits, we're gonna take the hot glue gun, and we're gonna put a small bead of glue right around the perimeter. Doesn't have to be a lot. I'm using our flight test 300 watt. It actually has a selectable temperature gauge. And I like to turn my temperature down really low so we have plenty of time to work with the glue, but at the same time, it's not so hot that it melts the foam or burns our hands. Same process on the other side. We're just gonna line it up, make sure that we're happy with the way everything fits. Flip it over. We're gonna take the hot glue gun and we're gonna put a small bead of glue right around the perimeter. Doesn't have to be a lot and then we'll let it dry. Our center section is now done. Let's go ahead and put it onto the main body of our wing. To do this, we're gonna carefully slide this up and you'll see that there's a gap right on the back. I'm just gonna kind of open this up and slide it back through. We're also gonna have the center section here that we're gonna wanna open up very carefully. As we press it through. Take your time, go nice and slow. There we go, get that open. And she'll slide right back in. We're gonna take both sides here. We're just gonna push it right into the tabs. This is gonna line us up in position there. And the same thing on the bottom. Tab there, that'll meet up. You can see once we put the main section here that everything kind of fits in and lines itself for you. Make sure that it's nice and straight and then all your tabs are fully in and then you can come back with a little bit of hot glue and you can put it right in the crease and hold it down and let it dry. I typically only put glue on one side because we don't really need a lot of glue on this to hold it together and make it really strong. All right, and then we'll put a little bit of hot glue on both sides of the center section where the doublers are. And let that dry. And then one final bead right down the bottom, right along that rib. And then we'll hold that in place and let it dry. Notice I'm not putting a whole bunch of hot glue on this because we don't want to add a lot of weight. A lot of weight on the airplane will cause it to not climb as easy and fly as well. We have our fuselage onto the main body of our nemesis. Let's go ahead and get our vertical fins and peel the paper. Just a very slow, gentle pull and the paper will come off. So our vertical fins are gonna give us stability as it flies through the air. It's gonna keep the plane from wandering to the left or the right. The vertical fins on these are the same top and bottom, so you don't have to worry about which side is up. To fit these into the Nemesis, we're gonna take note that we have a line right where our wing crease is right here. When we slide our vertical fins in, we want that line to go exactly with it like you see. You don't want the fins to be inward or outward. Once you're happy with the position, we're gonna hold this in place with our hands and put a nice bead on the top and on the bottom. Give this about a minute to fully dry before moving on to the next step. All right, same process on the other side. Quick test fit, we're gonna slide this in place right up against that tab. We're gonna line it up with the crease of the wing. And then I'm just gonna kind of slightly pinch that down with my fingers as I come back with a bead of hot glue on the top and on the bottom. 
I'll just kind of slide that back into position. There we go. Just gonna slide it back into position here, and then we'll let it dry. The last step in the airframe for our Easy Nemesis is to install the four wing here. You're gonna notice that there's a slight up deflection here on the very front. This is gonna give us a little lift, just like a canard aircraft, where it's gonna make the airplane have really gentle stock characteristics and also be very stable. We're gonna go and peel the paper, and then we're just gonna slide this in place. Now you can use some of your extra scrap foam included in the kit to actually cut replacement noses for this, and you can also change the shape to change the flight characteristics as well. Give that a try sometime when you're flying it. So the airframe of the FT Easy Nemesis is now done here. Now you guys can throw this around as a chuck lighter to glide it through the air, but one thing you're gonna notice is it's not gonna fly well until we get our center of gravity properly established. Now you're gonna see right at the point here and here where the wing kind of kicks forward, that's where our center of gravity is gonna be. So we're gonna use a couple nuts included for nose weight here, and we're gonna install one or two of them to get the center of gravity where we want. Now every plane is going to be a little bit different. It's all going to depend on the characteristics, how hard you throw it, and how you want it to fly, based on how you want your center of gravity to be established. Yes. Oh, oh nice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is satisfying. Oh man, come on. He's going like straight it. through the. Ready, set, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Isn't it funny how these things just, you just go. <laughs> All right, so this flies fantastic as a check letter. Our next step is to go back. We're gonna put some electronics on it so we can fly at radio control. So at this point, our center of gravity is established. This is gonna be an awesome little glider and all that's left for you to do is to go out and have some fun, practice throwing this, move your center of gravity back and forth to see what kind of flight characteristics you're gonna get. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna install the FT Easy Pack 2 channel. This is gonna give you the ability to make your airplane radio controlled and also have a great time flying outside. Let's go ahead and remove this nut and then we'll start putting our electronics on. We're gonna go ahead and unbox this real quick, kind of identify everything. We have our transmitter, we have our main control board, we have our charger, we have extra props, and we have our left and right motors, our battery, and our prop changing tool. Before we start on this, let's go ahead and put our batteries on charge so by the time we're done, we can take this out in flight. To charge our battery, all we need to do is line up the tab so it slides in easily, press it into place, and then plug this into a USB charging port. Make sure that when you plug this in that you see your red light turned on. When the battery is fully charged, the light will go out. So our battery is on charge, and what we have left here is our right motor, our left motor, our main control board, our two extra props, our prop removal tool, and our controller. Let's take our right motor here and tape it into place. So with the plane's nose facing away from you, we're gonna go ahead and work on the right wing. Whenever we talk about our right and our left side of the airplane, it's always as if you're inside the cockpit flying the airplane. We're gonna flip the airplane over 180 degrees. Now on the bottom surface of the right side of the wing, we're gonna place our motor down into the slot, and then we're gonna take a piece of tape, and put the first half of the tape right on the wing, just like that. Press it down into place firmly. And what I like to do is with a little bit of pressure, fold that around. There we go. Make a nice strong joint there. I'll use the other half of the tape that I have. Tape it down, apply a little bit of pressure, and fold it around. This is gonna make a nice strong joint, and the nice part is, is when you wanna jump your electronics from one plane to the other, you're not removing any glue. Same process on the other side now. I'm just gonna go ahead and just tape that on the fin right there. Slide it in place. Press that down. We'll wrap it right around the other side and pinch it firmly. Like I said, you can use simple scotch tape for this. You don't need to use two inch packing tape. There we go, nice and firm. Ready to move on to the control board. Now our control board comes in this little housing. This is the exact same housing that is on our FT Easy Freighter. To remove the housing, all we simply need to do is put our fingernail right in that tab and pull it straight up like this. We're not gonna need this housing, so we're just gonna go ahead and put this to the side. The first motor lead we're gonna be working on is gonna be our right motor lead. We're gonna pass this through the center section of the fuselage just like this. 
We're also gonna pass it through the tiny little hole in the center section of the control board. It just pops through, you can kinda use your fingernail if you need. And our next step is to carefully plug it in. Take your time and make sure you line up your pins and it'll press right down in place. Before we slide our control board into place, we're gonna put two small drops of hot glue on the front and on the back. I'm gonna slide this right down, just like that. And then we're gonna squeeze it up against the foam and hold it till it's thoroughly dry. Now if you ever need to remove this, all you need to do is just give a little bit of wiggle pressure and the hot glue will release from the foam, or you can use double-sided sticky tape if you wish. It's really important that you make sure that the control board is firmly attached because you don't want this coming loose in flight because it'll cause the plane to fly funny. Next, we're gonna line up our left side motor and notice that the left side motor is also color-coded red to red. We're just gonna line up the pins very carefully. A little wiggle, and it'll pop right in place. Now we can go ahead and dress our wires up. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm just simply gonna take a couple little scrap pieces of tape. And press this one up against here. Tape it into place. And the same on the other side. Now if we go back to our center of gravity here with all of our electronics installed, you're gonna notice that the plane's gonna be severely tail heavy. Our battery that we have charging is gonna be what gives us the proper center of gravity now. So we're gonna to wanna to do the exact same process that we did before, where we put our fingers right on the leading edge here and here, and then we're gonna position our battery inside the slot that you see here. We then can move the battery both forward and backward to get the proper center of gravity and get the flying characteristics that we want. To get our airplane ready to fly, the first thing we're gonna do is connect our battery, just like that. Once we have our battery connected, go ahead and turn on our control board. You're gonna see a rapid flashing red light. With our throttle positioned all the way down, we're gonna turn this on. You're gonna notice that our flashing light that was going really fast is now going slower, and we have a rapid flashing here. We're gonna move our transmitter all the way up to the top, and then all the way to the bottom. And when we do this, both the light on the transmitter and the control board will be solid. At this point, we can hold the airplane right side up. At this point, we should have full motor control. <laughs> Notice that when we give it a little bit of power and we move it back and forth, that when we move the plane to the right, that the right motor is gonna accelerate and try to push it back to keep it level. At this point, we have our center of gravity established, we have our transmitter controlled, we're gonna take it out to the field. Now default with a transmitter, this is set to low rates. Unless you have a wide open field, I would strongly suggest your first flights to be on higher rates so you can turn tighter. To get your higher rates, we're simply gonna press the rates button one time. This is gonna make the little red light flash rapidly. At this point, we're ready to take it outside and put it up for its first flight. All right, friends, so we have our center of gravity established. We're bound up, we're ready to fly. Let's go ahead and give this a launch. I like to just launch this underhand real simple into the wind. And there she is. <laughs> she flies great. So once again, when you're flying this, half throttle is gonna be about level. When you increase it beyond half throttle, it'll climb. And when you decrease throttle, it's gonna go ahead and descend. One thing you always wanna do is carry at least 10% throttle until right before you touch the ground. Alright, friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Kids out there building this at home or at schools, God bless you, man. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this. I can't wait to see what you learn from this and also what you design in the future. We'll see you next time.